Good day everyone. In today's video I'm going to take apart my uh, little air compressor and uh, see if we can fix the battery on it. If you're interested, stay tuned. Alright, so I had this air compressor uh, for a little bit now, for a little over two years. Uh, it's pretty useful. I like bring it on my bike and I can bump up my bike tires, uh, car tires, whatever. It's uh, very portable, very small. But it started to have a little issue where it uh, dies pretty quick. So uh, what happens, it still charges, it still turns on, but only runs for like a minute and then it shuts off. And then uh, sometimes this battery percentage will jump from like three down to zero and it'll die. And then it can turn back on and it'll go back up to three, but it will not be used, uh, useful by much. So when I'm I'm assuming is going on with this uh, one of the uh, cells inside here is probably dying uh, so uh, what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take it apart and I uh, see what's inside and see what's going on uh, so let's get started on that I'm gonna throw my camera up there and then we'll get going All right, and just like that, everything is apart. It came apart pretty easy. Uh, had to pop these uh, side covers off to just have this little uh, tabs. You just uh, pry something in the corner and then work your way just nice and slow without breaking them. Both of them will come off. There's uh, four bolts that hold the clam shell together. You pop those bolts off, but before this part comes out, you need to pop top and the bottom off. That's kind of uh, clip in there. Also, just use it screwdriver like I did there and it popped right off and then the clamp comes right out uh, but anyways uh, so what we got on the inside we have our uh, battery uh, pack uh, just uh, looking at it right here it looks like a 2s pack at 7.4 volts at 2000 uh, milliamp hour so 2 amp hours at uh, 14.8 watts uh, so just two batteries put in series it uh, looks like uh, I was looking over here Looks like the battery management is inside there, that little board right there, and then you have a negative and a positive go to the uh, board to supply the power, and then that powers the um, probably controller for the motor and everything else. Uh, so uh, what my steps are, first thing I want to do, I want to test and see how many amps it's drawn from this uh, uh, battery just to see what kind of cells I should use. This sense is just kind of a cheap unit. They could have used like a cheaper cells that are not maybe even rated for an amount of uh, uh, amp draws that uh, this motor draws and that's why it killed them so fast just in a couple years. So I want to uh, give it a little test to see. Uh, it's powered on. What I'll do, I have my clamp meter, that uh, what measures the amps, it's overkill one, this thing is huge. Uh, I'm going to throw this on, hang on one second, I'm going to put you down. Okay, so the clamp meter is on, it's pretty much zero, just 0 0.3, that's fine. Uh, and uh, I just turn this on. Looks like I'm drawing about two amps. So a little under four amps, so it's not very big draw. Uh, so so that's good. So if I put anything that has over 10 amps uh, output for the cells, I think it would be okay. So this is very cool. So yeah, you see the draw died. Uh, with it being low battery, maybe you could draw more, but uh, yeah, I think the safe bet would be if it, uh, the cell can put out over uh, 10, 10 amps, it's, uh, it's probably good. Uh, so next step, I'm gonna take this uh, Shut this off, and I'm going to take this apart, and then I see what the voltage is on each of these cells. So what it looks like is a battery positive, it goes from the top, just top of this battery, Battery negative uh, goes all the way to the back, and these two are connected together. So there's this uh, little uh, strip that uh, it's like a half voltage, so that uh, grabs the voltage in between the cells, and that goes to this little uh, board, which is uh, the RBMS. So I'm going to check the voltage uh, 
from here to here and from here to here just to see which each how much voltage each cell has in it So the voltage was identical, about 3.6, 3.7 volts a piece. I thought maybe one of the cells failed, that's what most of the time happens, but these ones are just getting wore down. They're probably a low quality cell. Uh, I don't know, I could have uh, probably Googled that, but it's probably just a cheap uh, uh, Chinese cell. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna disassemble these uh, pack and then see if I can uh, build something because what I got, I got these uh, batteries already here. They are also, 2 amp hour, so it's going to be identical capacity as these were when they were new. And the, the only cool thing about these cells, they can pull it, put out like 30 amps a piece, so they're very uh, high current. So uh, probably overkill for this setup since we confirmed that it only draws like 4 amps or so, maybe 5 amps at the higher pressures or something. Uh, so uh, I'm gonna uh, replace them with these. It, it, like I said, they're a bit of an overkill. What you could do, you can use like a 3.5 amp uh, cells instead of these ones with like, you know, 10 amp output or something. So that would uh, pretty much double the capacity and increase the runtime on this uh, pump uh, substantially. But uh, uh, this is what I have. So I'm just gonna throw these in instead of ordering the other ones there. Alright, all the old batteries are out, uh, uh, the new ones are right here and ready. Uh, what I did, I uh, put the insulators on, on the top of them. Uh, the old ones had them. As you can see, old ones had them. Uh, the, uh, try, you could probably reuse the old ones. I just uh, I've, I had the new ones uh, laying around, so I just used those. What it does is just gives you extra protection. See, the factory already has the insulator uh, built in from the factory, that little white one behind the shrink wrap. And uh, a lot of the good battery builders, they always use the another one, you know, on, on the top. So uh, this was actually fairly well put together pack. So uh, anyway, so it's two uh, that I put on there. And uh, we're going to go over the wiring again. So we've got the little battery management board. Uh, the main positive is the short one, and it is marked here. This is battery positive. Uh, main, main negative of the pack is uh, this long one, and this medium-sized one is the, for the uh, BMS connection to monitor the cell voltage in between there. What I'm going to do, I'm going to put this uh, back on. Uh, for that, I'm going to use the spot welder. A uh, guy could have used the... Uh, just a regular soldering gun. You could uh, use a little solder right there. And one little issue with uh, using a soldering gun, you have to use a very high power one first. So you don't have to heat the cell as much. But it also, uh, it always heats a little bit of the cell. And every time you solder onto the battery, since it heats it up to very high temperature, you could lose a little tiny bit of a capacity. And you also have to be careful not to overheat your cell. Uh, but if you go fast, you could you, you, you could you use a soldering gun if you have one around, you know. Uh, I, I do, but uh, uh, I also have this uh, spot welder that I've uh, built a long time ago. It's just a battery pack with a little relay, and then it runs a spot welder, and I have a little foot pedal, so whenever I step on the pedal, let me show you, there it goes, uh, it activates the relay, you hear it clicking, and then it basically shortens the uh, connection out whenever you have it on there. Uh, so I'm going to use that just because it doesn't heat up the cell as much, there's no cell damage, and I already have it, so uh, that's what I'm going to use. But if you didn't, uh, like I was saying, you could use uh, just a regular soldering gun and uh, re-solder these uh, connections back on. So I'm going to do that, and then now we'll show you when it's done. All right.
right, so um, the pack is uh, together. So what I have here is the, I'll show you right here, is the main positive connected to the positive. Uh, then I have main negative coming off the battery management system, going to the main negative of the battery pack. Uh, then I have the uh, ha half voltage, so in between the cells. Uh, this one here goes in between the cells and also both of these cells connected to negative to positive to make it a 2S pack. Uh, I also have these uh, the small uh, shrink wraps. I'm gonna put them on and try to use my heat gun to kind of shrink wrap it back up uh, to make it nice and uh, factory. Also, uh, I'm sure to use that little insulator uh, that put that back between battery management system and the battery cell just to uh, so that it doesn't get shorted out. So that's also there. And uh, we have uh, this insulator here that was originally there. So like I said, I'm gonna use the shrink wrap that I have and uh, uh, I'll show you the final result here. And it uh, turns on. Pump fires up. That's good. So uh, let's uh, finish putting it together. All right. Uh, little compressor is back together. Uh, I'm charging it up right now. Uh, hopefully it lasts another couple years uh, and uh, runs a little longer with, uh, with new cells in there. Uh, hopefully the better quality cells and uh, they uh, perform a little better. Uh, but before I let you guys go, I wanted to do a little quick experiment. So what I'm doing right now, I'm charging up the, one of the old uh, cells that was in there uh, with uh, my uh, RC charger. I'm going to charge it up all the way and I'm going to do this discharge test just to see how many... Uh, milliamp hours are uh, left in this uh, so it's going to give us the true rep representation of how much this battery degraded over time uh, so uh, once this charges I'm going to run a discharge test and I'll update you before I let you guys go all right so discharge test is done I charged it up uh, all the way this battery and then I discharged it at uh, 1.5 amps and uh, it only lasted about 209 milliamp hours the cutoff voltage was uh, 3 volts and only lasted about uh, 8 minutes so as you can see this battery was shot if I used a lower discharge rate and then maybe lower cutoff voltage I probably could have gotten more out of it but it just uh, this test just shows that these web batteries are wore out I was trying to look them up and then I, I just couldn't find these batteries it's just this no name cheap batteries anyways uh, so uh, this uh, project is done uh, thank you guys for joining me uh, hopefully this one will last me a little longer and then uh, many more uh, uh, tires inflated on this one I uh, appreciate you guys watching and I'll catch you in the next one bye Thank <laughs> you.